10 Key Points About Malaria What is malaria? Malaria is a life-threatening disease caused by parasites of the genus Plasmodium, transmitted to humans through the bites of infected female Anopheles mosquitoes. The disease is characterized by cyclical fevers, chills, and flu-like symptoms, which can escalate to severe complications if untreated. Types of Plasmodium There are five key species of Plasmodium. Plasmodium falciparum, Plasmodium vivax, Plasmodium ovale, Plasmodium malariae, and Plasmodium nolisi. Plasmodium falciparum Plasmodium falciparum is the most dangerous species, responsible for the majority of severe malaria cases globally. It can rapidly multiply in the bloodstream, leading to severe anemia and complications such as cerebral malaria, which can result in death if not treated promptly. This species is prevalent in tropical and subtropical regions, particularly sub-Saharan Africa. Plasmodium vivax Plasmodium vivax is known for its ability to remain dormant in the liver, causing relapses months or even years after the initial infection. While it generally leads to milder symptoms than Plasmodium falciparum, it can still cause significant morbidity. This species is primarily found in Asia, Latin America, and some parts of Africa. Plasmodium ovale Similar to Plasmodium vivax, Plasmodium ovale can also cause relapses due to its dormant liver stage. However, it primarily infects individuals with the Duffy blood group, making it less common in certain populations. It is mostly found in West Africa and the Western Pacific Islands. Plasmodium malariae Plasmodium malariae can lead to chronic infections that may last a lifetime if untreated. It is associated with long-term health issues such as nephrotic syndrome, due to significant protein loss through urine. This species is found worldwide, but is less common than others. Plasmodium nolisi Originally a parasite of macaques, Plasmodium nolisi has been recognized as a cause of human malaria in Southeast Asia. It has a rapid 24-hour life cycle, which can lead to severe infections quickly, sometimes resulting in death if not managed adequately. Its emergence highlights the importance of understanding zoonotic transmission dynamics. Recognizing these five types of plasmodium and their associated risks enables healthcare professionals to tailor prevention strategies and treatment protocols effectively, ultimately improving patient outcomes in malaria management. Transmission Dynamics The primary mode of transmission is through mosquito bites. However, malaria can also spread via blood transfusions, organ transplants, sharing contaminated needles, or from mother to child during pregnancy or childbirth. Understanding these transmission routes is crucial for implementing effective control measures. Global Prevalence Approximately 3.3 billion people are at risk of contracting malaria worldwide, with the highest incidence in Sub-Saharan Africa, parts of South Asia, and Latin America. In the United States, malaria cases primarily occur among travelers returning from endemic regions. Life Cycle of the Parasite The Plasmodium life cycle involves two hosts, humans and mosquitoes. After a mosquito bite, the parasites travel to the liver to multiply before entering the bloodstream and infecting red blood cells. This cycle leads to the characteristic symptoms of malaria as infected red blood cells rupture. Symptoms and Diagnosis Symptoms typically appear 10 to 15 days after infection and include high fever, chills, sweating, headache, nausea, and fatigue. Diagnosis often involves blood tests such as thick and thin smears or rapid diagnostic tests to confirm the presence of parasites. Treatment options. Treatment varies based on the plasmodium species involved and the severity of symptoms. Common medications include chloroquine for sensitive strains, artemisin and base combination therapies for resistant strains, and primaquine for preventing relapses in certain species. Preventive measures. 
Preventing malaria involves several strategies. Insecticide-treated bed nets. These provide protection during sleep. Insect repellents. Products containing bicaritin are effective. Preventive medications. Prophylaxis may be necessary for travelers to endemic areas. Complications of malaria Severe malaria can lead to serious health issues such as cerebral malaria, brain swelling, anemia due to red blood cell destruction, and multi-organ failure. Early recognition and treatment are vital to prevent these complications. Public health strategies Efforts to control malaria include vector control programs, for example, insecticide spraying, community education on prevention methods, and improving access to diagnostic testing and treatment in endemic regions. These strategies are essential in reducing morbidity and mortality associated with malaria. Take-home message. Malaria is one of the most widespread diseases in the world and remains a leading cause of death and illness in tropical regions. There are five species of parasites that cause malaria in humans. Plasmodium falciparum, Plasmodium vivax, Plasmodium ovale, Plasmodium malariae, and since 2007, Plasmodium nolisi, which is found in Southeast Asia. The disease spreads through the bites of female Anopheles mosquitoes, which are most active during nighttime hours. Common symptoms of malaria include fever and body aches though some cases may present atypically with chronic conditions like anemia and enlarged spleen. Plasmodium falciparum infections can lead to severe complications, including life-threatening anemia, kidney failure, and cerebral malaria. People living in areas where malaria is common often develop partial immunity, resulting in infections without obvious symptoms and low levels of parasites in their blood. Doctors cannot reliably diagnose malaria based on symptoms alone, which leads to both overdiagnosis of malaria and misdiagnoses of other diseases in regions where malaria is endemic. Healthcare providers can confirm malaria infections through several methods, including thick blood smears, thin blood smears, rapid antigen detection tests, and DNA-based testing. For plasmodium malaria infections, chloroquine remains the standard treatment option. Doctors treat Plasmodium vivax and Plasmodium ovale infections with chloroquine, and when possible, they add primaquine, though patients must be tested for G6PD deficiency before receiving this medication. Medical professionals are observing increasing resistance to chloroquine in Plasmodium vivax infections across several regions. Plasmodium falciparum has developed resistance to multiple drugs, including artemisinin-based medications which is causing significant concern in the medical community. Medical guidelines strongly recommend combination therapy for treating plasmodium falciparum infections with three main options available. Artemisinin combination therapy, such as artemether plus lamifantrin, quinine combined with either doxycycline or clindamycin, or atovaquone plus proguanil. Individuals can protect themselves from malaria by using bed nets treated with pyrethroid insecticides and taking preventive medications, while some travelers may benefit from carrying emergency self-treatment medications. Public health efforts focus on controlling mosquito populations, though these efforts face challenges due to increasing insecticide resistance among mosquito populations. The first malaria vaccine is currently undergoing phase four clinical trials in children who live in countries where malaria is endemic. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.